According to Apple, there are two recommended ways of uninstalling apps. If you downloaded the app from the App Store, chances are you can delete it from Launchpad by accessing Jiggle Mode like so. But you'll also notice that not all apps have the option to be deleted from Launchpad. For example, Brave Browser doesn't have a cross in the corner of the icon to click on. The difference seems to be whether the app was installed from the App Store or from the internet. Apps from the App Store can be deleted from Launchpad, whereas those downloaded and installed from the internet cannot. Internet apps require Apple's second recommended uninstall method, which is simply to drag the app from the applications folder to the trash can and then empty it. The problem is that both of these methods do a terrible job of removing all of the files associated with an application, resulting in all sorts of random files being left on your Mac clogging up space. Let me demonstrate this problem using the imaginatively named tool called App Cleaner and Uninstaller, which does do an excellent job of locating all of the files associated with an app and deleting them. For this example, I'll delete this app called the Unarchiver, which I downloaded from the App Store. I'll first delete it from Launchpad by long pressing on it and clicking on the X. If I now go back into my Uninstaller app and check Remaining Files, which identifies the files left over after an application has been deleted, you can see all of these files associated with the Unarchiver still remain on my computer. It's the same problem using the trash can method. If I reinstall the Unarchiver and then delete it again, this time by dragging it to the trash can, you can see that when I go back into my Uninstaller app, again I have files remaining that should have been deleted. If I didn't know any better, these files would remain on my Mac forevermore, simply clogging up disk space. This may not be too much of an issue in this instance, since these files don't even add up to a megabyte in size. However, compare that to say GarageBand, which I deleted a while back because I never use it. As you can see, nearly one gig of files associated with GarageBand still remain on my Mac after the app has been deleted, just sat there using up valuable storage space. So what is the solution? Well, there are a lot of third-party apps like this one, App Cleaner and Uninstaller, which will delete apps properly. Another good alternative I've tested is Clean My Mac X by Mac Paul. However, unfortunately, neither of these are free and there doesn't appear to be a free app that does as good a job as, as these two. The free alternative I've been using for many years is called App Cleaner, which you can download from freemacsoft.net. To download it, simply click on the link here and then copy it from your downloads folder to your applications folder. App Cleaner has a nice feature called Smart Delete that you can enable by going into Preferences. Once enabled, whenever you drag an application to the trash can, App Cleaner is automatically activated. As you can see, it does a better job of identifying associated files that should be deleted along with the app. However, if we compare it to the paid app, you can see that it found significantly more files that should be deleted, such as this folder in Application Support. If you're happy to pay for App Cleaner and Uninstaller, then you can do so from nectony.com for a one-time fee of 20 bucks. However, if you'd rather not pay, you can still download and use the app for free, except you can't use the uninstall feature, but you can still use it to identify those extra application files that need deleting. For example, if I drag the Brave browser to the trash can, App Cleaner gets activated, which I can use to remove most of the files associated with Brave, and then having deleted those, I can go back and see which other files I've missed. Then it's just a matter of searching and deleting those files using Finder. I'll open up Finder, click on Go, and press the Alt key to access the library folder. I'll navigate to Application Support, and scrolling right, there is the now redundant Brave software folder, which I'll delete. With each file or folder that I delete, the list gets updated, and I can go through the remaining files like this until I've deleted absolutely everything associated with the uninstalled app. 
Clearly this solution isn't ideal and for the sake of 20 bucks, I'd probably just prefer to pay knowing that the apps will be uninstalled correctly. However, either way, it's worth at least using the free version of this app to see how many files are left over on your Mac from apps that you've previously uninstalled and how much space you might be able to reclaim. So that is how to uninstall apps on your Mac properly. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hitting subscribe for lots more of the same. And you might also be interested in finding out how you can hide files, folders and apps on your Mac or how you can transfer files between a Mac and an Android phone. Until next time, my name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching.